Do you love firing massive volleys of explosives at people? Do you enjoy air superiority? Are you interested in getting a killstreak with a weapon that actually rewards you for doing so? If you said yes to any of my inquiries, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has on offer, and I show you how to get a kill streak with it. Because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, we'll be covering the airstrike. So without further ado, let's get into it. If God had wanted you to live, he would not have created me! The airstrike is a rocket launcher for the soldier that was added back in 2014 during the Love and War update, and can be crafted via fusing a Baker's bazooka with some gunboats and a reclaimed metal together in the crafting menu. However, like always, I recommend just trading or waiting for a random drop if you wish to acquire this weapon for yourself. And for the love of god, do not buy weapons off the Manco store. Anything that isn't a key or a tour of duty ticket is just a scam there in my opinion. You can legit just get any equipable item for less in a higher quality from other places like third-party trade sites or the Steam Marketplace. I could go on all day on this matter, but we're here to talk about how to get a killstreak with this weapon, not how to get one on a good price from a trader. As for what the airstrike does, it reduces the damage you take from rocket jumping by 15%, and whilst you rocket jump, your attack speed is increased while your blast radius on your rockets is reduced making this an excellent weapon for anyone trying to land direct hits while rocket jumping through the air. And whenever you do manage to kill someone with this weapon, your clip size is expanded by one rocket per kill. This effect caps out at 8 rockets however, so unless you're playing man vs machine, don't get any funny ideas of being able to fire a dozen rockets at your opponents at once. Also keep in mind you need to get the killing blow in order for this particular feature to trigger, so if an opponent is under sentry fire or a scout keeps stealing kills from you, you won't be able to get any mileage out of this feature whatsoever. And just like the medic's uber charge or the islander's head counter, you will lose all stacks of this upon your death. So if you're struggling to stay alive whatsoever, you might want to consider using one of Soldier's other rocket launchers. You know the one. As for the downsides, your rockets deal 15% less damage and have their blast radius reduced by 10%. This makes the airstrike ideal for players who enjoy firing upon opposition whilst rocket jumping through the air, players who can consistently land direct hits with their rocket launcher but find the default clip size to be way too restrictive for their needs, and soldier mains who can consistently get a kill streak going with their rocket launcher and would like something to actually reward them for doing so in the first place. Just remember to be mindful of your health and ammo, since while your clip size will go up every time you get a kill, your health and ammo pools will not. Keeping your ammo topped off should not really be a serious issue for you most of the time since players drop medium ammo packs upon death, so as long as you're keeping on top of those and remembering to take a moment to reload your gun every now and then, ammo should not be a serious concern for you. However, if keeping your health topped off is becoming a serious issue for you, consider equipping the conch for the health regeneration. When using this weapon, most players will do so alongside the base jumper, which I have already done a video on, so click the annotation in the corner of your screen if you want to see my comprehensive thoughts on that weapon specifically. But when used with the airstrike specifically, it can be a very useful tool since it allows the window of time you have to line up your shots become much wider. Which consequently means it's much easier to land your rockets against the opponents you wish to kill. Just keep in mind that you're a slow, easy to hit target when you're using these two weapons together. This is perfectly displayed with my experiences on Hightower when I was recording for this video, where I was able to dominate the enemy snipers whilst getting dominated by an enemy trolder who would market garden me as I parachuted through the air. So realize, sometimes it's best not to rocket jump through the air for an easy kill, since when you're rocket jumping through the air, you're a vulnerable target to aware players. So remember, just because you can do something, doesn't mean you should. Patience is a virtue, and we're trying to get a kill streak here, not an epic multi-kill. And that leads to the biggest mistake players using this weapon tend to make, being overly aggressive. These players often act like a hiring agency with this weapon and firing their inexperienced rockets at a problem with a quantity over quality approach. And whilst this can sometimes work, every now and then you'll eventually find that one critical hit rocket being reflected back at you by the pyro's dying air blast, or a vaccine or medic will appear out of nowhere and ruin your day, or some mad lad will magically materialize from the ether and kill you with a random crit. So while firing over a baker's dozens worth of rockets at your enemies and watching them melt is fun, remember it's not a silver bullet. 
Also remember, you need to get 4 kills with this gun before you can unlock its full potential, so you might need to play a little more passively than you'd like at first in order to get that ball rolling. And if you're struggling to get out of spawn, you might need to temporarily change weapons or even class in order to fix whatever mess your useless team got you in. We've all had to do it, people. Sometimes you have to go direct hit soldier or play spy and focus the problem child on the other team until they swap or rage quit so you can play what you want. All in all, I give the airstrike a snowball out of 10. This is a weapon that rewards you for doing well, and if you're able to take the flank and dominate clueless players, you will find this weapon being an excellent addition to your arsenal. However, whenever these noobs end up on your team instead of the opponents, or all decide to start turtling as engineer, you'll find this weapon lacking. Still, there are a few things better than annihilating your foes in a vehicle-less bombing run. I also recommend taking this thing into Man vs. Machine, since you can upgrade the everything of this gun to the point where you can make bots die so fast the heavy on your team might not have time to rev his gun back up after eating that sandwich to help you out. Trust me on this, it's so much fun. That's all for now though, like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, comment what weapons you want to see me cover in the future, I've been an Ian, you have been you, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Streak Guide to the Airstrike. And stay tuned, the Islander is coming up next.